You can have it by then. That's the first time I've ever seen a lawyer give me back money. <laughs> it's a very good small profession. It certainly is, but I'm one, so it's okay. Hey everyone, I'm Ben Schneider. And if you're an American game show fan, you may know that game show legend Chuck Woolery was the host of Greed. What you're far less likely to know is that talk show legend Jerry Springer was also the host of Greed. Seriously, believe it or not, both statements are factually true. Now, I've already talked a lot about the American version of Greed on my channel, and it's no secret at this point that it's one of my all-time favorite game shows. Dare I say it? I may have even liked it just a bit more than Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. What? That's what he what? said. What? I know, that's what he said. Who wants How? to go first on that, this? That, I... that, that, that is blasphemous. That is blasphemous. How wow. dare you? How dare you say such a thing? That is insanity. I know, probably an unpopular opinion, but I'm drawn to the drama aspect of it. I love Millionaire too. don't get me wrong. But watching teammates strategize and work together before they're inevitably pitted against one another? What can I say? I like it. It's intriguing. Plus, it had a $2 million prize to further set itself apart. That was just a cherry on top. But what even an avid game show fan might not know is that Greed was adapted in a handful of other countries around the world. Millionaire, of course, started with ITV in the UK before ABC brought it to America with the late great Regis Philbin. Greed, on the other hand, began in the US with Fox, and then came to Great Britain with Channel 5 and Jerry Springer. Unlike Millionaire, Greed's run was pretty short, all things considered, and it left the Fox airwaves in July of 2000. Dick Clark hinted at the end of the year that he'd soon be pitching an idea to Fox and other networks for a revival, but it ultimately never came to be. But on May 8, 2001, Channel 5 picked up the format for a British version, with Springer as the host. Springer was actually born in the UK, but he's best known for his work in America as the host of his self-titled tabloid talk show, The Jerry Springer Show, and for being mayor of Cincinnati once upon a time. The basic format of the show was virtually identical to that of its American counterpart. Six contestants are asked a qualifying question with a numerical answer, and the contestant whose guess is closest to the exact number is appointed the captain, though in the British version, they're referred to as the team leader. The contestant whose guess is furthest from the qualifying question's exact answer is eliminated, and the game begins with the five remaining contestants. Jason, let's see what you had. Oh, I'm sorry, that's a very tall person. Okay, thanks for being with us anyway. While the British pound is more valuable than the American dollar, British Greed's money tree was slightly less valuable than American Greed's. Questions in the first half of the game that only had one correct answer were worth 5,000, 10,000, 25,000, and 50,000 pounds. For questions that had four right answers, the values were 100,000, 250,000, 500,000, and a million pounds. Terminators were also worth 5,000 pounds instead of $10,000. So while American Greed tried to one-up Millionaire by doubling the top prize to $2 million, British Greed decided seven figures was good enough and kept the top prize at a million pounds. Only 11 episodes of Greed were produced in the UK, and unfortunately, despite my best efforts, I've only found two clips of a show online, which doesn't really give me that much to work with. Fortunately, however, the second of these clips contains the final part of the last episode, which featured a contestant and team leader by the name of Sean Wallace, and Sean has gone on to have a wildly successful quiz show career, most notably serving as one of the chasers on the British version of The Chase. Sean's even released a highly detailed book on his game show experiences, including around 20 pages dedicated to his time on Greed, which gives us a lot more to go on when talking about the show. In his book, Sean reveals that he was contacted by Greed's production team in the middle of April, before the show had aired, and before he'd even gotten the chance to formally apply. American Greed actually did this as well, recruiting previous game show champions as early contestants for the first few episodes. Viewers may have recognized early teammates Dan Avila and Curtis Warren from Jeopardy and Win Ben Stein's Money, respectively. Similarly, Sean had just appeared on The Weakest Link and was actively recruited by Greed's producers. Eventually, he was asked to come to the studio towards the end of May as a prospective contestant, where he was officially selected to appear on the show. 
Sean ended up being the team leader for his game, and his team would ultimately end up being the best performing team of the show's run. At the point at which there's footage available online, the team had successfully answered question 5, sitting on 100,000 pounds. Much like Dan Avila's game, where the captain's teammates all wanted to retire with their winnings, Sean's teammates are all practically begging him to take the money. But the prospect of becoming the all-time high winner on the show proves to be too tempting. I always said if I sat in this chair, um, you know, I would... I'm going to gamble. Significant unhappiness from Angela. <laughs> Rob will pull out your hair. <laughs> Huey is just nervous. Not angry, nervous. And you're very courageous. Yeah. What's the name of the game? That's the name of the game. You'll all be very wealthy people if you're right. Team member Allison Pittman, nicknamed Pooey, had already won the first Terminator challenge. And the Terminator selects her once again. <laughs> Now, uh, Pooey, here we go again. I offer you another 5,000 pounds. She challenges Angela to bank another 5,000 pounds and ends up with a guaranteed 10,000 pounds regardless of what happens. In which city in Germany is the annual beer festival known as the Oktoberfest held? Munich. You're right. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Well, wait, congratulations. Join us. Let's continue the game. So Sean and his teammate Rob are now playing for 50,000 pounds each, while Pooey's now playing for a staggering 150,000 pounds just for herself with three-fifths of the share. The quarter million pound question asks for four athletes voted BBC Sports Personality of the Year during the 1990s. To quote what Sean says in his book, this is the type of question he can answer in his sleep. Because Sean is the team leader, he holds the power to change one of Pooey or Rob's answers should he have to. So he decides to up the tension a bit for the viewers by keeping the freebie. Remember, you have your freebie. Yeah. If you want, you can use that now and I will have the producers eliminate one of the incorrect answers. No, I'll keep the freebie. You'll keep it? Okay. You're a very courageous guy, but you've made that decision. You don't want to eliminate one of them. Okay. That says to me, that's your decision, I'm not changing it, but it says to me that you're pretty confident that you know who these four are. Oh, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> that should make you guys feel pretty good. Okay. But remember, you only get to change one of their answers. I appreciate that. All right. You are... So much more courageous than I would be, but okay. Pooey is confident in forming the one driver Damon Hill, while Rob selects sprinter Linford Christie. Sean chooses distance runner Liz McColgan and F1 driver Nigel Mansell. The fourth pick, you are the leader. You can choose who is going to give that answer. Yep. Obviously, if you think you know it, then I'll choose it. You're going to give the answer. And what's yeah. the fourth answer? Nigel Mansell. Nigel Mansell. And in doing so, sets a new record for most money won on British greed. This is a seminal moment in television. Um, it, I, I gotta tell you, to be honest, it's the single most exciting moment I've ever had in television. I've never been around people that are about to either win or lose this kind of money. So uh, I'm pretty excited. Let's find out. You've got three correct. You know what I'm gonna do now. If the fourth is correct, you've won 250,000 pounds. If you're not sure of that, I'm gonna let you get out of it right now. I'm gonna offer you 25,000 pounds. Just split among yourselves. Twenty-five thousand. You know what? I've never held that in my. Can, can I actually hold it, Jerry? I'm going to let you hold it. I'm going to let you smell it. I'm going to let you. You can't taste it because it gets soggy. There you go. Kind of nice, huh? Ooh. You can have it, by the way. That's the first time I've ever seen a lawyer give me back money. <laughs> it's a very good small profession. It certainly is. But I'm one, so it's okay. That's good. All right. Ah, uh, there we go. 
Let's get back now. You're willing to bet everything on your answer. Everything. Here we go. Four. Two hundred and fifty thousand pounds. Is Liz McCalgan the correct answer? A quarter of a million pounds! A quarter of a million pounds! First of all, already congratulations. That is well, the most... Team. To the whole team. Yeah, to the whole team. That is the most money won on this show. The team now has the opportunity to go for 500,000 pounds. And if all you do is watch the episode, it looks like Sean's tempted to go for it. And per individual, right now, Pui, you have 160,000 pounds in your pocket. You, you are begging. She's begging because she doesn't want to lose that. Rob is saying cut it he's got 50,000 pounds in his pocket Sean you've got 50,000 pounds in your pocket you know that's the most that's money a I've ever seen it's, <laughs> it's, it's a quarter of a million pounds it is it is honestly a ton of money but with his teammates begging him to stop he elects to take the money this is the once in a last lifetime chance for me no! but I've got responsibility to my teammates so I'm gonna take the money you're gonna take the money in reality, Sean writes in his book that he never seriously considered playing on, knowing the risk outweighed the benefit. He and Rob go home with their 50,000, while Pooey claims a staggering 160,000 pounds altogether. She'll even personally give the teammates she eliminated 5,000 pounds from her winnings, which means the whole team will have reason to celebrate. Good on her. For curiosity's sake, Sean goes on to write that he ended up asking one of the show's producers what the 500,000 pound question would have been. She tells him the question would have asked for the four most important events of the 20th century from a surveyed American perspective. And to me, this is kind of an unfair question on Channel 5's part. You have a question here that seems to be subjective. And while you can argue a lot of the American Greed's questions were survey-based, at the end of the day, the four most popular soft drinks in America are still objectively the four best-selling soft drinks in America. Whereas if you ask 10 people to rank the importance of historic events, there's a pretty good chance you'll get 10 completely different answers. So in short, Channel 5 really didn't want to give away half a million pounds, and it's probably a good thing Sean elected to go home with the team's quarter million pound winnings. And with that, Greed's run in the UK came to an end. I know this video wasn't as detailed as some of my other ones, but if you watched my previous Greed videos, you already know how the show works. And again, with only 11 total episodes and only two clips having resurfaced, there wasn't much for me to work with here. But I still feel the same way about the show. Fox pulled the plug too early in the US, and Channel 5 pulled the plug too early in the UK. If you get contestants who know how to play the game, it's an exciting format. And in my humble opinion, it deserved a longer run. I do want to thank Sean Wallace for going in depth on his greed experience in his memoir, and if you want to check out more of his game show career, his book is available on Amazon for Kindle and in paperback, and you can still catch him on British television through The Chase and its spin-off show Beat the Chasers. And if you want more Greed content, subscribe to my channel. I'm not sure when I'll get to it, but I've got a couple more video ideas when it comes to this show. So stay tuned for that, subscribe for more game show and motorsports videos, and as always, thanks for watching. You have been wonderful, wonderful guests, and what a wonderful way to end this show. And it's my birthday as well. Happy birthday! Happy birthday. Well, that does it.